With the End of the Death Volume 3 coming to a close, we finally have the single largest war in the history of the Imperium, mostly, and I do mean mostly complete, since we know that we have the final Bequin novel and a lot of other promising stuff in the pipeline. But naturally, I think it's only rational that we move on from the biggest war the Imperium has ever faced over to the second biggest war that's ever been fought, that of the Rangdan Xenocides, or the Rangdan Crusade. From what little sources that we have, we do know that the Rangda was a major player in the galactic stage, operating out of the Halo Stars, or more specifically, the northwestern part of the borders of the Imperium. So the Rangdan were such a threat to the Imperium that we lost a Primarch, a legion and over a quarter of a million of the Emperor's Angel. Easily the largest battle outside of the Horacy. It's probably best to start with scale, as it took three separate crusades or xenocides depending on the presenter, and the forces brought to bear against the Rangdan is truly staggering. Nine Space Marine Legions in total, the Dark Angels, Space Wolves, Warhounds, who are the world eaters before Angron, Death Guard, White Scars, Raven Guard, Alpha Legion, as well as both the Lost and the Damned Legion. It's also worth noting that we don't know what they look like, what they eat, or even how they produce. And yes, knowing humanity, I know at least one sick bastard who would try to sleep with an alien, and uh, yeah, that's me. I'm that sick bastard. They are referred to as either the Rangdan Cerebvores and the Rangdan Osseovores meeting skull or head eating and bone eating respectively. Now physiologically they have been described as anything from Lovecraftian horrors to fish people to like jellyfish things but uh, more on that later. I'm going to be breaking this up into three parts with each part being presented as the forces of the wider Department Munitorum would see it or recognize it. 839.m31 The First Rangdan Xenocide from data cores recovered from the Forge world of Zana 2, we know that the Imperium of Man first came across the Advex Moore system. It was the first legion, the Dark Angels, led by their Primarch Lion L. Johnson at the head. Upon Zana 2, the Dark Angels, as well as a combined force of over 100,000 auxiliary elements of both Tegmata and Imperial Army, 50,000 Dark Angels were at the head of this force with over 100 capital class ships and three Gloriana class battleships leading the way. One of those Gloriana class battleships being the Invincible Reason. The first Rangdan Xenocide truly began with the assault on the capital system of Advex Moor. When the Wedge or the Spear Tip broke through the warp into the Advex Moor system, it wasn't only Xenos who greeted them, but humans too. To the horror of Imperial fighter pilots, they fielded strange weaponry theorized to be rad-based weapons and often called shadow blasters that left a miasma of radiation that took a deadly toll on the imperial navy this in concert with energy shields and propulsion that were pushed to a truly reckless extent this however is the imperium and they haven't figured out how to reverse engineer brakes yet Despite the heavy losses inflicted, the expeditionary fleet kept pushing to Advex Moore's Extremis, and with the Grand Master of the First Legion, Giga Chad Urian Vendrig I, at the head. To the horror of the Imperium, it was discovered that there was only one Rangda on this planet, defending a single factory garrisoned by a small horde of slave soldiers. For over three hours, the Imperium steamrolled the slave forces, taking minimal losses. Well, minimal for the Great Crusade. If a chapter lost 200 Marines today, they may as well go extinct, or just merge with another chapter. Back on the topic of the Rangda though, they seem to have built their entire empire off of the subjugation and exploitation of slaves, as they spent lives without any regards for the mindless drones to protect the single Rangda on the planet. These overlords, as they would come to be known, had complete control over the various slave races through a collar or some sort of nerve stapler. The four outer worlds of the Advex Moore system were scoured in a similar manner to the first engagement on Advex Moore's Extremis as the Dark Angels assessed their adversary. The four outer worlds had been mostly abandoned by the time the Imperial fleet approached the capital world of the system and what could only be described as a battle moon. This venerable bulwark looked as though it had been shackled to the will of the planet itself with its entire surface was coated in a formidable carapace and energy shield array capable of withstanding the Imperium through its way. And while comparing the two, its armament far outmatched the Imperium in almost every way. 
The battle moon had been garrisoned only by slaves, not a single Rangda stood within its carapace. Only the unfortunate meat puppets who had been mentally and physically controlled or piloted by the Rangda garrisoning Advex Mors Primus. Up to the invasion of the capital planet, only a handful of true Rangda had been killed. Only an uncounted number of drone slaves of the various slave species who would become lab rats to these aquatic abominations. The plan for the initial assault on the attack moon was a large fleet attack of focused fire to create an opening for a small force to infiltrate the bastion. This, however, did not work, as the Rangda actually cared about this planet and it shone clear as day to the First Legion. This was a war of attrition. Any firepower the Imperial fleet brought to bear against the attack moon failed miserably as its energy shielding absorbed all but the largest of macro cannon rounds. After heavy losses were inflicted on the defense fleet of Advex Mors Primus, with the Imperium suffering equally, it was decided they needed a radical change of plan, and the battleship Paradigm of Hate made full thrust towards the battle moon. Acting as if it were a spear tip, the defense fleet scattered as the glowing and raging inferno that was the Paradigm of Hate cut deep into the surface of the battle moon until she grinded to a violent halt. The crew aboard the Sacrifice Gloriana class battleship had created an opening, and they had intended to make the most of it. The First Legion contingent aboard planned to rig the ship's reactor to blow and set up defensive positions accordingly. It was here where the true fangs of the Rangdun menace were shown to the Imperium. As massive creatures later identified as different phenotypes, both cerebvores and osseovores, the elite of these warriors had protective energy shielding on top of extremely advanced weaponry and armor. Towering above their meat puppets and unleashing a barrage of radioactive hellfire, the Rangda sent forth detachments to purge the quickly diminishing Imperial forces, but to no avail. Eventually, the battleship reactor exploded and a ripple ran across the surface of the entire moon, silencing the behemoth. To call it a cloud of debris in orbit would not be an accurate assessment, as a venerable nebula of shrapnel and flame erupted from the surface of the battlement, giving the Imperial fleet a chance to finally focus on the planet. Through more hard-fought void battles, the two remaining Gloriana-class battleships broke orbit and managed to create an opening for a hail of drop pods inbound to a spot away from the fortresses and defense platforms which blotted its surface. Smaller squadrons of transports and gunships strafed the various columns of slaves sent to investigate the crash as well as smaller fortresses which dotted its equatorial plane. With each day that passed, hundreds of Astartes met their end as the unwavering resolve and strength of the elite warriors of the Rangda slowly unraveled their secrets to their adversary. Grandmaster Vendrick had come to understand the Rangdon menace completely, though the Legion had paid a good man for every secret gained. 30,000 Space Marines moved towards the fortress bastions that remained dotting the planet's equator, and the Rangda answered in the same way they always had. Slaves first, until a weakness is found, and then exploit that weakness with overwhelming force. That tactic may have worked for lesser races, but this was humanity, and more importantly, the First Legion. As they burst through the walls of slaves, not allowing the advantage to the enemy, the proud Rangda met their human adversaries head-on, despite having the assault turned against their favor. It is said that it was an even fight, both sides comparable in skill and power, both sides unrelenting in their hatred. When Uriel Vendrick finally met the Rangda general in a fury of cuts and dodges, the neurotoxin lace blade of the Rangda menace and its massive strength bore down on the chapter master, who despite having his armor broken and being battered physically, Uriel had finally won the duel and held the severed head of the Rangda high for all to see. Following this, what remaining forces loyal to the Rangda, fled to the other distant bastions, if only to buy themselves more time. Despite the inevitable hammer striking the anvil, over the coming months, the entire Advex Moor system was systematically purged of all remaining Rangda. The remains of the attack moon were slowly and painfully cleared, as well as combed the ever-increasing nebula of shrapnel that danced around the system. With around 10,000 Dark Angels and 50 Imperial ships of the line completely destroyed, the Dark Angels had left a bloody scar on the galaxy. A reminder for all that the Dark Angels would not relent 
even when the costs were great. Ultimately, the Dark Angels sacrificed many men and the title of the largest legion. Never again would they rise to such a peak. If you wish to see the zenith of the Dark Angels, you must simply go to Advex Moors.